Okay, the, the button the button's been pushed. Okay. Awesome. Hi. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Um, last session, you uh, were invited over to uh, Van Carlo's house mm -hmm. so that um, he could go over exactly what to expect or what he knew about uh, Dervargo mm -hmm. and Eel's End. And he also uh, asked you all a lot of questions about very philosophical questions what it means to be a hero and what do you think of yourselves and then challenged you to a duel where you almost completely wiped the floor with them you did but it was almost like a flawless victory <laughs> <laughs> if he um, hadn't resisted that last scream I god know. damn it it's the I curse know. of the fuzzy red dice I, I, I just want to point out that there's so many people in role-playing games that think if you don't have a well-balanced party, you can't do much of anything. We have nothing but casters. <laughs> nothing but caster classes. And you guys are beating the crap out of people. I love it. It's, it's um, the curse of the fuzzy red dice. <laughs> but uh, It's been nerfed. You guys, in, in typical... Uh, Crimson Throne Heroes fashion, beat the piss out of him, and then invited him to dinner. Uh, and he ate bugs. And well, he a ate bug bugs. Singular. He ate bugs. Um, and uh, you guys basically spent the evening resting up and preparing to go to Eel's End. Um, which I will point out on the map here. Eel's End is all the way in the back of um, <clears throat> Old Corvosa. It's this pier right here. On the map itself, it doesn't really have a good representation of it. It's just one <laughs> ship there. But uh, yeah, I'm about didn't to you say it was a bunch of ships that were like yep. tied together? Indeed. I'm about to show you. So uh, it's the last pier, um, and not too far from your... your um, Orphanage, technically where you're coming from, it'd probably be the first pier because you'd probably go back and then over. So it'd be the first pier you come to. Um, what time of day or night do you guys want to approach Eel's End? So I think we would be going at night. Kind of like, probably like around dusk. As is aesthetically appropriate. Yeah, villain, villains are notoriously sleepy during the daytime. <laughs> well, you do know that Eel's End is not very happening during the day, definitely. Um, it's because it's full of villains. What did I just happening. say? They're right? all sleeping. <clears throat> um, so. Okay, got it. I'll just point that. So Arlen spent her day in the lab most of the day. Uh, you all got a full night's rest, of course. Spent most of the day in the lab preparing stuff. Um, so you guys meet up so you're saying around dusk so like say after the sunset but before it's completely dark mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so you come to the pier and um, you you see that it uh, is an, an old um, it doesn't seem like it's the best kept pier but it's stable enough when you get on it um, and it's certainly clean it's not too slippery or anything of the, of the like. <clears throat> the first thing you notice when you enter the area is, is a sprawl of light and sound. Um, it certainly has glowing lanterns, the shape of dream spiders and coiled eels hanging from uh, pilings and lampposts or, or flickering through um, different uh, windows in the ships to the point where in the darkening sky, these lanterns begin to cast colored shadows over everything. It's very festive. It feels almost like uh, you're at some form of festival. Uh, the pier itself is about 70 feet long. Um, although the last 30 feet of it or so widen into a large square platform, excuse me. Um, and uh a large ship with four smaller permanent vessels. Or I mean, four smaller vessels are all permanently moored to the pier. So it's easy to tell that these ships are not designed to move. They are permanently fixed to this location. Um, there is the one massive ship in front uh, and then four smaller ships to either side. Um, when you approach them, you do see several signs. Give me a second. We should totally try and steal um, one of these ships. I bet we could sail it away. 
<laughs> you know, just I cut, bet you would go exactly <laughs> twenty feet before cut, it sinks. Cut the bridge. <laughs> Uh, give me a second. Da, 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 da. It's not cold. It's 70 degrees in this house. Sorry, I'm just trying to find actually the names. Okay, so you see several signs. You see uh, the big ship has a sign on it that says Eel's End, uh, which is the name of the ship and also the the place in general uh you see uh this ship here the one that says c5 there's a sign leading to that one that says house of clouds uh this c4 ship over here there's a sign on that one that says the twin tigers uh the c6 ship says dragon's breath corridor and finally the c3 ship says the golden hawk um would you like any more information on any of those ships? You can see them fairly well from where you are. Which one looks like the sluttiest? Uh, that would be... Um, Looking for the owl. That brothel. would be the, the House of Clouds. The House of Clouds, um, it's a single long structure, sits atop, uh, a single long structure sits atop the main deck of this barge, and it has double doors that are wide open uh, that reveal a large room that you can see even from the pier, decorated with throw rugs, large pillows, and the air is very thick with incense. Um, the scent that arises of rose water and cinnamon, and it pours out over the deck so where even off the ship you can smell it coming from there um several scantily clad men and women loiter around the barge's deck and it's clouds not clowns to be fair that was not me asking and i'm (laughs) usually the deaf one no sometimes you guys sound the same i'm sorry what do you mean? I was writing it. I mean, I was reading it. Yeah, Someone wrote that they're down. both coming yeah. from my account because it's I'm the one got who it. Wrote it, but. Got it, got it. So that one definitely looks the sluttiest. It's pretty clear to see that this is probably a brothel. Okay. If I had to look at all of these ships and say where the money's at, where would I go? Well, looking at the ships, you see the Golden Hawk, um, the C3 one, the Golden Hawk here. Um, it's a small <laughs> ship. It's probably seen hundreds of repairs done to it, so you doubt it's actually seaworthy. Um, it, but it does seem stable. It looks like a um, a sort of inn. It's not very loud. There's people that go in there, but most of the people you see going in there are staggering drunk or passed out. So it definitely seems more of an inn than anything else. Um, how are they, how are they hmm? getting into the bar if they're passed out? Into oh, the Laura, be bar. Nice. They're already there. Yeah. No, they, they're going to C three, the ship over here, the Golden Hawk. Uh, many of the people you see over there are the ones that are staggering, drunk, or already passed out and being carried on. Um, um cl- the uh, like somebody who's <laughs> asked that that question was asked by somebody who's never been drunk, so. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh Dragon's Breath, you can't really tell what that one is. Um it's uh, it's it has a uh, Dragon's Breath painted in gaudy red. Uh and the sign at the aft end simply reads Pass into the Dreams of the Dragon. It's kind of hard to tell what the ship is for. Uh however, C4 on the other hand, it's not hard to tell this one. It has two hot like structures sitting on top of it, and there's raucous laughter and uh, roars of victory and money changing hands sounding from within. It's very easy to tell that this is a gambling hall. These people are filth. Let's get our job done and get out of here. <laughs> Arlen's interested in seeing the uh, House of Clouds, so she kind of starts walking that way. Okay. Uh, does anyone else follow her? <laughs> no, she can go up. I know she can. Yeah, sure. No, just lo- just looking at the smoke is making Weary's eyes water. So she's going to give everything that looks like it might have smoke in it a good, a good wide berth there. Okay. So uh, what about you, Amelia? 
She will very hesitantly follow behind. Oh. As you, uh, you you approach um, the Dragon's Breath Corridor, uh, you are stopped by uh, as you basically as you approach all the ships uh, because you actually have to go through um, the Twin Tigers to get to um, I the we Dragon's to, Breath. I thought she was going to C five. Yeah, I'm going to the House of Clouds. I'm sorry, House of Clouds. Sorry, it's, it's okay. It's um, shit's complicated. <laughs> I am. Yeah, it is. It is a little bit. Sorry. So yes, you're going to the House of Clouds over here. Um, yeah. So you would actually have to go through um, the Golden Hawk. Yeah, or or Eel's End. You can go either way. So actually, that's a good choice. Uh, do you want to go through the Golden Hawk or do you want to go through Eel's End? Um, what does Eel's End look like? Uh, Eel's End is a very large ship. Uh, it's tied off to the piers uh, uh, so that it's permanently uh, attached to the dock as the others. It has the figurehead of a coiling eel with a woman's head. Um, you can see currently at the moment there's several drunken sailors and revelers that dance and drink on the large open main deck here. Um, but really, other than the people on the deck, it doesn't seem like there is... Uh, any establishment, so to speak, like on the other ships. Okay. Um, then, yeah. Since I'm looking for information, mm -hmm. um, in addition to being intrigued by uh, the uh, House of Cloud, I'm going to go through uh, C2, the Eel's End. Okay, sure. Um so as you approach the uh, warship, or the old warship, I suppose you could say, um, you are stopped by two enforcers uh, on the plank. And they look like, you know, your typical kind of thug or bouncer. They're a little bit dirty. They wear clothes that, that are somewhat matching uniform in the sense that they're both white shirts and both brown leather pants. But that's about as close as they get. Uh, they each carry a uh, blackjack on their belt. And also a more dangerous weapon for each of them. Um, they stop, and uh, one of them, who's got an eye patch, kind of spits out in the deck and goes, "What do you want?" Um, Arlen's going to try and bluff them. Okay. So, do you want me to roll first, or say what I'm going to say and then roll? It's up to you. You can use a roll to define what you say, or you can say what you want first, then roll to see how effective it is. I don't mind either way. Well, I'm going to say Arlen looks up at uh, both guys and says, well, I had a free night off. We got a pocket load of coins. I'm looking to have some fun. Blow off some steam. You boys have any suggestions? <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking to spend some money, you should go over to the Twin Tigers. Or if you're more looking for a good time, he says, like eyeing you up and down. I suppose. The, uh, excuse me. Sorry. How was the clouds? Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't keep these names in my head for some reason. Oh, I, I don't blame yeah, you. If you're looking names. for a good time, House of Clouds might do you well. Well, what, uh, I don't feel particularly lucky tonight, but, uh, you guys seem to know your way around. What would you suggest? She kind of gives, uh, one of the guards a wink. <laughs> Go to the House of Clouds. See Madame Helvara. She'll get you figured out. Much you obliged. Got the coin. If you got the coin, you're welcome. Um, and I'll uh, give them a silver each for their uh, uh, assistance. They'll uh, they'll take it. One of them will nod. And as you're going up the plank, say, don't go to the back of the ship, though, unless you got business. Which ship? The House of Clouds? This ship. Oh, all right. Vargo don't like people poking out in there unless he invites you there. I will keep that in mind. See that you do. Yeah, I will. Thank you. 
You boys have a good night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they just go on, turn around to other people. Mm. Didn't even have to roll a convince check for that. You're not necessarily lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. All right. So they let you onto the deck of uh, the eels in itself. Uh, as you get on there, you can tell this is a an old but very well-constructed ship. And it's fairly well-maintained. A lot better maintained than the other ones, certainly. Um, and you do see several people on the deck drinking and talking and carousing. Many of them look like uh, other people that might be thugs or enforcers of some kind. Um, whether they are in Elin's employ, or they just happen to be thugs that are here. Uh, it's hard to tell. But there's about, oh, a good seven or eight people mulling around the deck drinking. So, uh, the first thing Arlen's going to do is try and look to see where she can get a drink and um, just find a place to sit and kind of uh, watch the uh, area. And like, uh, uh, on the eel's end? Well, I, would I have to get a drink at the eel's end? Well, you don't see anywhere to get a drink at the eel's end. There's no establishment, like I said, on this ship. Okay. You you, you saw plenty of places to get drinks uh, at the Twin Tigers or the House of Clouds, but the, the eel's end itself looks... More like, um, if anything, more like the offices. You know, like when you go to the mall, there's that little corporate office section that isn't a store in and of itself. There's, yeah. Yeah. So what what Arlene's going to do is she's going to go back to um, the – go over to the House of Cloud and get uh, four ales for everybody and, like, kind of stand around on the um, – Eels in because there's a lot of people around there up on the deck just kind of drinking. Then you're stuck carrying uh, two ales because you realize Mary didn't come. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, well, when you get to uh, okay. House of Clouds, when you get to House of Clouds to get the ale, you are immediately surrounded by men and women, uh, very scantily clad, saying, Hey, you looking for a good time? You came to the right place. You disgust me. Get away. <laughs> oh, don't be like that. I bet he plays hard to get. I like those ones. Oh, God. Arlen's going to say, uh, you know, uh, maybe give me a chance to uh, get something to wet my whistle. I might be uh, more willing to play after I've had something to drink. You suddenly realize Moiri did not come with you for a reason. <laughs> or does she? Maybe she's sitting there thinking, I don't know why Mary's not coming. <laughs> yep. This totally seems like her scene, man. This is like a great time. Exactly. I bought her alcohol and everything. That's what Otto was thinking. Where the hell did Mary go? <laughs> um they uh they they look a little disappointed, but um they, they don't uh, they don't accost you or anything. They let you go get your drink. Um so at the House of Clouds, there is a very simplistic bar, which is basically just a, a table with about six casks behind it, each with a tap in it. Um, and one uh, elf who is completely bald and has uh, about six earrings in his left ear. And he goes, what can I get you? Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> what would you recommend? I don't think I've ever had a drink before. Oh <laughs> he like starts to speak and stops. Right. Maybe we start you off with something simple like ale. Sounds good to me. Can I? Uh... Uh, I see. So you're one of them here to try the experience. Well, everybody's got to start somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that they do. That they do. And uh, with that, he starts pouring a cask, uh, a mug of ale, and he goes, word of advice. Always willing to accept advice. The ones with red scarves on tend to be a little rough. Stay away from them. 
there's okay. certain clientele that enjoy that kind of thing. But for a first timer like you, best to save that for the future. He says as he puts the mug of ale down. I will definitely keep that in mind. I appreciate it. Um, I, I wanted a three more uh, for my friends as well, since and well, first I'm gonna like Arlen's gonna look around see if anybody came with her. Did Amelia else? is looking very uncomfortable <laughs> on the other side of the bar. Uh, yeah, Mary has been outside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Amelia is currently surrounded by like two, uh, one uh, guy and one girl that are going, I love your tattoos. Oh, I wonder, do they run all the way down? And one of them like, like kind of starts to tug at your shirt. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And she just uh, pulls her scarf tighter around her. <laughs> and wait, wait, don't like, be shy. We're not going to hurt you unless you want us to. Wait, <laughs> no, no, that's the. Quite all right, and she she takes a step behind Otto, who's looking awfully ornery. Yeah, like Otto, like they've started leaving him alone. <laughs> Especially consider he's in full armor. <laughs> um, the uh, the the bartender looks at your companions, like looks at the, you looking at your companions, and then follows your gaze, and then says, "Huh, well." Group rates are typically more, but, you know, to each their own. And he starts filling up two more mugs. Oh, God. And just tell him, you, uh, you know, first time out, it's always good to have a wingman or two. <laughs> he looks at you <laughs> and just shakes his head. <laughs> It goes whatever you say, and he like plunks the other two mugs down. If you need a wingman and a brothel man, I gotta tell you, (laughs) it's like that's bad news there. Arlen has no idea what she's getting herself into, so you know. I just have to imagine what's going through this bartender's mind. Like, these are your wingmen, this terrified little thing in an angry giant (laughs) armor. Really? Okay. All right. Whatever. Uh, uh, Amelia, as uh, Arlen is getting the drinks and Otto is standing there looking, or uh, how do you say that word again? Said ornery. Uh, Ornery. Yeah. Thank you. I, I just don't use that commonly. <laughs> uh, looking ornery. Um, you suddenly hear from behind you, Shoo, Shoo, you're scaring the poor thing. I'm so sorry. Madam Elvira, at your pleasure. And you see before you a very pretty half-elf with dark silky hair that runs down her ears and sprawls out to the middle of her back. She's wearing um, what looks like red and green silk robes that are just suggestive enough to show uh, what's basically to leave what uh, things up to the imagination. Show some titty. Yeah, no, no. Doesn't show any titty, but shows enough cleavage to make one wonder. So show and like 50% titty. Like some side boob. Yeah, some okay, side boob. Okay, tasteful, tasteful side boob. Okay. Tasteful Very side boob. Is side boob tasteful? Yes. It is on her. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Helvira pulls it off. Um, she goes, I am sorry. They do tend to get very excited. Tell me, darling. What are you looking for? Um, at the moment, I'm just trying to uh, take not it all talking, in and co- not okay. talking to you, Sib. Sorry, she's talking to Amelia. Yeah, I did. What? Um, I didn't hear that. Sorry. That's fine. Because she was saying not to scare her or whatever. It was kind of yeah. She came up behind <laughs> Amelia. I, and I don't think I don't think you're giving off the frightened doe vibes. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Arlen may seem a little confused, but she doesn't seem frightened in any way. Uh, so, yeah, she's talking to Amelia. I said, what are you looking for, darling? Um, nothing. Uh, not, I'm, I'm just 
um, friends there. Um, <clears throat> oh, sweetheart. People don't just wander in here. If you're here, you're here for a reason. It's all right. No one's here to judge you. <laughs> um, no, no, really. It's, it's, it's quite all right. I'm um, just here with friends, she says, gently patting Otto on, on the arm. You only have one thing to offer, and that's flesh. She looks at Otto and gives a small grin. She goes, you obviously don't come here very often if you think that's all I have to offer. I doubt I'd have much interest in anything else you have to offer. Perhaps. But then I must wonder why you visited my establishment. Well, we have one thing in common. Oh, we're both wondering why I'm visiting your establishment. <laughs> she actually lets out a soft uh, laugh of genuine amusement. She goes, you're interesting. I like you. Are you sure we can't convince you to partake of our services? I have quite a selection. Let's just say for the moment that I'm um, working, providing protection, you see, points to Ireland. <laughs> uh, for people who I like see. to get themselves into trouble. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. But I was under the impression that we had quite a good reputation here. None of my men or women have posed or injured anyone who didn't ask for it in years. Well, except for Rico. But Rico doesn't work here very often. Um. Just Otto's just think looking at Darwin. Looking that at we her. had to worry about. Hmm? Sorry? No, I said I, I, I don't think it's them we have to worry about. You're not there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Miri's voice. I hear just a body voice. Like, hmm. <laughs> no, we have the walkie talkies, remember? <laughs> Except you gave yours. To I Clark. don't have one. <laughs> I'm just yelling at you. <laughs> You're just yelling through the door. Yeah, You're just like <laughs> you idiots. <laughs> you see, like an owl head just peering in. <laughs> you see her in the window, like angrily looking in. <laughs> she does. She does she... the straining head bird thing. Just like I see you. <laughs> I see you. She. she uh, Helvira. Uh, considers Otto and Amelia in turn and she goes oh how foolish of me of course you're not here looking for company you're looking for a job how did I not see that come come dears and she starts like taking you both very gently by the arms and pulling you back towards where there are like some throw pillows on the ground for sitting uh, no, at, no, at which no. point? At, yeah, at which, at which point, point? Arlen will speak up and say, "Oh wait, no, don't don't mind my babysitters. They're just here to make sure I don't get into too much trouble. They're always yeah. trying to be a wet blanket." They're, yes, they're, that's that's exactly it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're oh, with me. She kind of looks disappointed. Well, perhaps next time. Well, then she says, brightening up. What are you looking for? I am. Um, I'm not exactly sure, other than uh, a fun time and to uh, see what's available. You mentioned a wide variety of re of uh, services. I did. I did indeed. Have a seat, all of you, please. And she motions to the pillows. Amelia uh, sits down very hesitantly. Otto looks at the pillow and makes a face and stands. 
<laughs> Can you even sit in that armor? <laughs> Does it let you bend your knees that I, far? I believe so. It's just a scale male uh, breastplate. Yeah. Well, you know. He he practices. He, like in the orphanage, he'll I, sit down I and stand sitting. up. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do my exercises. He some squats until he's cool. <laughs> hey, uh, hey you, Arlen, don't, what do you, do? you don't get 18 strength without doing your squats, all right? Right. Mm-hmm. I'm just, you know, sitting there waiting to... Uh, Find out what "quote unquote" services are available, and hoping got one of them it. might be might be useful to the mission. Okay, I, I, I gotta know. I gotta be that guy. What's our way into this guy again? What's our way into this Dvorkian guy or whatever his name is? Tavargo. Tavargo. We're looking for yeah. We're, we're looking, looking for blackmail on the uh, Chalaxian delegate. Yeah. Uh, Darvani Geos Empery. We're okay, trying to hear. You know what? Tell you what. The Chalaxian delegate. Blackmail the <laughs> delegate. How does that get us to Devargo? Because then we go tell Devargo we have some shit on the delegate. No, we want to find no. out blackmail from Devargo. Yeah. So we need uh, resources, uh, or we we need to speak to Devargo to get information on the uh, Chalaxian delegate. Oh, okay. So and really, we we're can't just saying. Just walk straight up to Devargo. So we don't even know how to get to Devargo at this point. Yes, okay. I'm on board. That's yeah, like as I'm the enforcer. Yeah, as the enforcers also told you, like you know, don't go back there unless you have been invited or something. So. So that's why I was like gonna you okay, know, sit talk to somebody, find out what's uh, going on. Do uh, Amelia Otto? Do you guys accept uh, the mugs? Oh yeah, Amelia. Yeah, Amelia's going to take the mug, but she isn't drinking it. <laughs> this is okay. like one of those things where it's like, uh, I'm surrounded by heathens and I'm just going to drink it away. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> You're trading one sin for another, dear. Hey, there's nothing sinful about alcohol. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, also, also um, Arlen, that's, that's going to be 30, 30 copper pieces. For the three mugs of ale. Wait, I thought it was four copper pieces each. What? A mug of ale. Um, yeah, in some places, okay. not when you Whoa. go to the eel's end. Yeah, I'm gonna be it's like, kind of like, like, like saying it's kind of like saying it's kind of like saying hot dogs aren't that expensive unless you get them at Six Flags. Okay, that's fine. I don't fine. even um, know what Six Flags. Oh yeah, sure, is. sure. That must be an American. So thing. yeah, it's like an amusement park. Oh, okay. Um, do what Arlen mention something about that? Yeah, she's gonna say, "Wow, yeah. that that's higher than I thought." But okay. The uh, bald elf will nod. He'll say, "Well, sweetheart, you're in one of the uh, most popular places in the city." Huh. I bet being so popular, you must get a lot of different uh, clientele. We do, but. Madame Elvira would be more of the person to ask that kind of thing. Well, thank you, and she'll leave a, uh, what is it, three copper tip? Because you always got to tip your bartender. What? No. <laughs> <gasps> yeah, all right, uh, he'll, 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 he'll take it and he'll nod. Uh, so, and then you, you, you go down there, you accept the mugs of ale, and uh, Helvira goes like, like claps her hands together. And immediately, about 10 different people uh, humans, elves, half elves, half orcs, um, and one kindle uh, line up. And uh, she says, These are our available selection for the tonight. <laughs> Pup, puppy likes them. Quiet. Puppy. Puppy's like, I want that one. <laughs> Not a Ken doll. That's what uh, I heard too. Mary, I, yeah, I know. Mary, am I mispronouncing it again? It's. Does does that make Murray Barbie? Yeah. <laughs> Cuddle. Cuddle. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know why I keep putting it in, in there. But one cuddle. Um. So another person that looks somewhat like Mary, uh, different colored feathers and a different uh, 
size of the body figure. Are we able um, to make out gender on that, or is it just like I don't know? It's another owl. Like, mm, I can't nope, tell. it's all internal. Mm-hmm. Nope. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so you got uh, you got to look under the feathers. No, yeah, no, you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> no, not even just that. But good try. That would require a dissection more than anything. So that sounds complicated. Uh, and Helvira, as they line up, she she says. Uh, do any of them look appealing to you or do you need information? Perhaps do you have certain fetishes? Oh, uh, who we lose? Uh-oh. We, uh, the one person. The one person. Otto's resting bitch face uh, continues to progress. <laughs> Yeah, Ireland is progressively just... worse. Yes, it's deepening. It's a deepening resting bitch face. <laughs> like, the second she said finishes, Ireland blue screened. <laughs> <laughs> it was Arlen too much. Exe has stopped working. <laughs> Amelia's just hiding behind. Hiding maybe behind m- maybe Cressidia was in the in line. <laughs> um, when well, when y'all are done, Weary has a different plan. So. All right. Uh, Does your hey, plan not involve like right. hookers and stuff? <laughs> no, I just asked what the sexy ship was so I could avoid it. <laughs> all right. Uh, Sib, are you there? Uh, can you guys hear me at all? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm on my phone. So, uh oh, what happened? My internet went out. I'm trying to oh. restart my laptop. Oh, oh. hey, same. For like but two I seconds. You know, I don't know if it sounds horrible. Not really. Huh. You sound a little no, further away than sound... normal, but it's pretty yeah, useful. Exactly. It's the phone. It's not that bad at all for a okay, phone cool. microphone. Beats half the meetings I have at work, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Right. So we'll continue and I'll get my laptop back up when I can. Sure. So uh, what was the last thing you heard? Um, The girl sits me down and talks. That That was it. All right. She uh, she claps her hands and uh, 10 people line up uh, humans, elves, half elves, half orcs, one Kadal, uh, just line up in a, a wide variety of different types of people. And she goes, do any of these catch your fancy or are you looking for something more specific? A fetish, perhaps? Um... <laughs> Uh, I was... Oh, you're breaking up. All right, yeah. Tell you what, Sib, you are breaking up a bit. How about we jump over to Miri real quick while you get back up? Oh, I just took a bite of food. Hold on. I'm getting a drink. BRB. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, guys. Uh, you want everyone to take like a three-minute break. Sorry. All right. That's Sorry. fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm part. <laughs> it is fine. <laughs> Does this sound better? I switched over to using Bluetooth headphone with my phone. My word, sounds that sounds so worse, much worse. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It sounds worse? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and now All it right. sounds like you're on her phone. She's, she's mm-hmm. Okay. All right. It sounds like she called into an AM radio station. Yeah. <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> Welcome to role playing games where you get to role play being in a brothel. Woo! (laughs) Yep. Somebody who has no idea what's going on. There's always one. Yeah, no, Sib, we were saying when you dropped, we were saying that, uh, because we noticed you dropped after she said, did you have any fetishes? And we just figured Arlen's mind broke because she realized what they were talking about. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> Crap. Um, she's not quite that naive. Right. But I mean, she, wink. They right. should be practicing witchcraft. <laughs> She's trying to figure out how to bring it around to different types of customers, you know. 
Good fucking luck. God. Yeah, at this point, Amelia is just kind of <laughs> hiding behind the mug, pretending to drink, but not actually drinking. And it's kind of obvious that she's not actually drinking. <laughs> You guys noticed Flack followed you. No. <laughs> God. No. I I would have to imagine that in an instance like this, you guys would have made pretty sure that Flack and Toby weren't following you. At I, would, point, I would make allowances for Toby. He's a good boy. <laughs> he deserves to be in a Oh, you well, do he... have fetishes, I see. I <laughs> am. Y'all are dragging me, and I do not appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Um, how? How? What's the sitch? What's the sitch? Where are we at? I'm back. Steve. I'm good. All right. Uh, Sib. Yeah. Uh oh. You there? Did you get your computer restarted? Yeah, no, it's, it's the internet. Yeah, well, my computer restarted, but it takes forever. All right, that's fine. We'll switch over to Miri real quick then. Okay, thanks. Hi, Miri. Hi. What you doing? Uh, so Miri has avoided the brothel altogether. I see. Um, and Miri is actually just going to walk straight up to Eel's End. Okay, well, you all went to Eel's End, and then they yeah. just took a hard left, or right, I guess, from their view. Yeah, and she did not take the hard right. So wait, so she are you took the hard wrong the back? She's gonna sit to like end? right outside. I'm assuming there's like, what's over here? What does the back of the ship look like? Because I'm assuming once you get like here, you can kind of see. Right. So those actually lead up. So like, here's the lowest deck. Mm -hmm. Then here's like a middle deck, and here's a higher deck. Gotcha. Okay, um, sorry, we're way down on screen. I understand. I totally understand. You see that uh, you can get to this middle deck here. However, um, and up here in the very back, you see a bunch of hammocks. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a door here that's guarded by two guys that look very similar to the ones that were at the dock. Okay, so Mary's going to make her way probably over here, and she's just going to sit. And she's going to observe the people that are over here. Are they just, okay. like, chilling by the door? Are they talking about anything? No, there's, the only people you see in this area um, specifically are two what look more like guards than anything else. They stand on either side of the door. They don't really talk. They're not clowning around. They're just watching everyone, especially you. And they haven't said anything to you yet, but they're certainly keeping an eye on you. Okay. Um, Warrior's going to take a seat on the railing and kind of prop a foot up. And she's got um, a pipe in her mouth that doesn't have anything in it. It's just, it Almost. looks, it's long. It's sort of a, like an ornate, sort of, it looks like sort of an ornate opium pipe that might have come from the Orient. Got it. But it's All very right. clear it doesn't have anything in it. Okay. Um you sit there for a few minutes. Nothing happens other than the guards just kind of keeping an eye on you. After a little while, you see a uh, group of... Um, uh, uh, I want to be sure here. I'm not getting this wrong. Da -da 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 you see a group of four um, pretty thick, burly-looking men dressed not great uh dirty clothes uh few of them have some jewelry on them they're they're missing a couple of teeth they look like they've been in a quite a, a few fights um you see them walk up to the door and the guards and uh, one of the guards says not allowed back here and uh one of the four says dervargo invited us says uh it's time we move up in the world if we impress him and uh, one of the guards says, name, Santos. And uh, one of the enforcers uh, then nods and opens the door and the four guys go in. 
And then the door closes. And uh, when the door closes, uh, one of the guard who opened it looks at you just to see, you know, if you've done anything and then just loses interest and starts watching other people, other places. Gotcha. Mm hmm. Uh, she's probably just going to wait and see. What I'm interested to see is if those people come back out. OK. No, but uh, after about 15 minutes or so, you do hear some loud guffawing and ruckus and looks like it sounds almost like cheering and a couple of like thumps. Kind of hard to tell just by hearing what's going on, but there's definitely noise coming from there. Um, we were able to quietly remark to the guards that it sounds like it's quite a party in there. Yeah, one you're not invited to. Not yet. I'd like to point that oh, out, oh. eh? <laughs> oh, this bird thinks she can get an invite. Well, bird, I see. I see what they did there. <laughs> ah, clever that's pretty, that's Sorry, pretty um, good. <laughs> And the other one just kind of chuckles. So do you do anything else of note until your friends come back? Um, no, but she will. She will. No, not really. Okay. I got I got something I can think of that involves leaving the brothel because I don't think I'm going to be of any use there. Anyways. You're going to have to sure. talk your way out of picking out, picking somebody to fuck. I think I've saying. I think I've made it pretty clear. I'm not interested. I mean, he could just stand up and walk away. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are they going to do? Stop me? It's like, you didn't pick somebody yet. It's like, yeah, blow me. No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could I could see that too. It's like they're, they're like, do do any of these catch your fancy? And Otto just stands up and walks out. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Anyway, so well, quick question. Uh, so I remember uh, C three is like an inn, and C four is like gambling. What was C six again? C six says um, uh, into the dreams of the dragon. It just says the dragon's breath corridor. And uh, the sign says, pass into the dreams of the dragon. Is there like smoke coming out of it? Um, hard to tell. The doors are closed, but uh, you can catch whiffs of some pleasant smelling smoke. OK, I'm assuming that's like a drug place. Um, Opium den. I'm I'm going to go. I'm going to go back the way we came, like through the guards from from the eels end that we'd already talked to and head mm -hmm. towards c4 and okay. possibly see hopefully maybe there's like a way i can gamble on arm wrestling or something like that what kind of games uh, we well about? so you get there and uh you see inside there are uh, several different types of games going on there's uh there's dice, there's cards, there's wheels to spin, uh, and you kind of bet on what it's going to land on. Um, and then most importantly, or most uh, apparent is in the middle, there's a, there is a large table where people are currently playing a game of Knivesies. Uh, Knivesies? Auto, roll me a knowledge local check. Knivesies? Uh-huh. Knivesies. Is that like? Oh God! A, is that the thing that like where Parisi you like squares? stab between your fingers? I guess we're gonna find out. All right, Otto, you've heard of knivesies. You you've been into bars and stuff. Knivesies is a knivesies is a uh, a favorite game of the mm, bars and taverns of the lower ends of Corvosa. Basically, what happens is um, two people get up on a long table on either side of the table where patrons uh, patrons throw uh, gold that they bet uh, onto the table for one of the other guys. And in the middle of the table is a dagger. And the goal is simple. Either um, get more gold than the other person with uh, one, one of your hands is tied behind your back and the other one is next to, uh, it's not tied, but there's a pouch on your belt. And you can either try and get more gold than the other person, knock the other person off the table, or kill them. And depending on uh, in a lot of bars, it's not kill them. It's more like just 
knock them out or injure them. But you've been to places where that knife is quite real and people do die. Okay, I'll this play definitely some, seems like one of them. I will totally play some Nizies. Okay, knock some chump off a table. Pfft, no problem. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you, you have to wait in line as the the, the current uh, match is going on. There's a, quite a crowd gathered around it um, and quite a bit of gold on the table uh, as there are two very big, burly men um, facing off against each other. Uh, neither of them are wearing armor. Both of them are shirtless and uh, wearing pants. It looks like they, they, they may have been wearing something, but they took it off. Each of them have one of their arms tied behind their back and a pouch on their belt. It's and knivesies. Yeah, yeah. And uh, everyone is around them throwing gold on the table for on the side of who they're betting on. And they stand on uh, th- either end of the table to show who they're betting for. And uh, when the gentleman running it counts to 10, um, once he hits 10, both men rush at each other. There's a bald one. And there's one with very long grayish hair. He's obviously older. Um, the bald one who moves quicker gets to the knife first and the gray one starts trying to immediately scoop up gold. Um, give me a second here. Well, I got a question here since I know, like mm-hmm. you said you could win by getting more gold. Okay. But what ends Correct. that? Uh, either all the gold is taken up off the table. Or, um, yeah, pretty much. So so actually, you, you rolled well enough, so let me do this. So there's two ways to win Knivesies. You can force the other contestant to fall off the table, or you can end the game with more gold than your opponent claimed. Snatching a fistful of gold. Um, da, 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 da. Since each opponent only has one free hand, the first round is typically a mad charge for the dagger, forcing the slower opponent to make grabs for the gold. Uh, there, You know there aren't any other rules beyond this, and that most games devolve into a tabletop brawls. Um, the game ends when a contestant is unconscious, dead, or knocked off the table. Uh, as soon as no coins remain on the table, or as soon as any coin is knocked off the table. So in other words, the, you can end the game by having more gold than your opponent by either all the gold is collected, or all the gold is knocked off. Okay. So these two, the older gentleman and the uh, bald-headed gentleman, give me a second here. Okay. Uh, the older gentleman starts grabbing the gold. The bald head gentleman grabs a dagger and starts rushing for the older gentleman. They uh, kind of lock arms as the older gentleman gets stabbed in the arm and uh, everyone kind of cheers. Yeah! Woo! The older gentleman kind of just takes the... You know, uh, the mm-hmm. I hate to interrupt you, but these are not gentlemen. Just saying. That, that's a good point. <laughs> these... <laughs> Ruffians. <laughs> ruffians. I like that better. Ruffians. Uh, the older ruffian uh, just takes the knife blow and and heads the um, uh, headbutts the bald man in the face, uh, who then immediately backs up with uh, blood spurting from his nose. And the older gentleman continues to collect gold. And as the bald gentleman rushes towards him again, the older one very quickly and very deftly kind of spins out of the way trips him in the feet and the bald guy hits the table and falls off to the floor, which with there is immediately a loud chorus of cheers and boos, depending on what side of the table people are on. Um, The owner immediately starts uh, grabbing gold, all of the gold that is left on the table or in the person's pouch. And um, most of it is given to the winner, the older ruffian, and the rest is divided among those who bet upon him. And after that, after they do that, then he turns around and says, who's next? Who's willing to face our current winner of the night? Well, right, right, Anyone? When, right when the fight ends, Otto would shout like really loud. This looks like fun. Where do I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> we have another taker. Ah, oh, you know how to play. Sure. Beat the hell out of the other guy. <laughs> Everyone starts cheering. Yeah. And he says, nice, nice. Take your armor off. Don't worry. It'll be right here where you can see it. My men will be guarding it personally. And then, um, like, there's another guy that stands next to you with a cord to tie your hand behind your back. Uh, I just a quick whisper into the owner's ears, like, 
any kind of magical on this? <laughs> he um, hesitates and he goes, well, there's no rules against it, but it's not really. It's frowned upon. You won't make a lot of friends if you do that. And uh, he looks around. This isn't the kind of place you want to make enemies. All right. <clears throat> uh, so do you take off your armor and let them tie one of your hands behind your back? Yeah. All right, it's your choice. Which one? So pretty much usually it's your non-dominant hand. Gee, I hadn't and decided then... which hand this guy is. I guess he's right-handed. So. Okay. Um, give me a second. I'm going to move you guys over to uh, another map. I don't really... Let's see here. You know what? I'm just going to make a whiteboard. Let's just make this map a little bit bigger. Um, we'll see. There. Uh, if you guys scroll down to the bottom of your map, I'm going to make you a whiteboard right now. Uh, brown. Brown's a good table, a color for a table, right? I think it should be like... Um purple definitely ruffians fighting on a purple table no i'm sorry i'm just being difficult tonight <laughs> all right uh let me copy your token over that's a big freaking table holy smokes yeah. that's a big auto yeah. holy smokes that's a, that's a big auto uh no auto no uh, let me turn grids off and one thing, I love grids in this game, but it also tries to make you snap everything to a certain size. So here, we'll do that. The table is basically about three widths of you, so about 15 feet wide. It's it's a big table. Yeah, wait, 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 I'm sorry. No, that's way too big. I was just looking, I was just thinking about the table. dimensions I just said. Yeah, it's, a huge it's not table. beer pong, Squee. Yeah, so it'd probably be more like this. That's not a table, that's um, a stage. 15 feet. And then let me go grab. This table's like bigger Someone than my that house. is suitable. <laughs> did, uh, did, uh, Harlan ever come back? Uh, I'm yeah, yeah. Video. Oh, you're here on phone. I gotcha. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't monopolize the, uh, con the, the action here, but I gotta beat the hell out of Doogie Hauser here. Yeah, no, here's no, the I, ruffian. I, oh God. <laughs> well, I thought he was going against the uh, older ruffian. Yeah, he just I had a yes. Fight. Imagination. <laughs> that guy is not an older ruffian. <laughs> Excuse me. Maybe he's very young for his age. Wait, or old, whatever. Yeah. As he's you can very see young by for his age. As you can see by Otto's token, he's not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yep he does not look very impressed um so give me a second as you guys uh as you take off your armor and you both step onto the table um the observers start throwing gold on the table um it seems like a fairly even split uh because Otto Otto's a pretty beefy guy he's got a strength of 18 so um you know that's that's no joke and people can see that. They're like, you know, new guy. Maybe he's and, got something to it. And it's all on his right arm because he's a blacksmith, right? He's got the one skinny right. arm and the one big arm. As no, blacksmiths are wont to do. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a thing. That's true. Yeah, it's, it is true that it's bigger. But I mean, it's not like it's not like Lady of the Lake size difference. And if I, anyone gets that reference, I'm sorry. I didn't know the Lady of the Lake was a blacksmith. <laughs> No, but there was a character in there that, that worked out just one side of his body and he looked like a freak of nature. Oh, weird. It was really weird. Yeah, it was really strange. Um, but they end up throwing about 50, uh, 32 gold pieces onto the table. Uh, it kind of spread around. Um, and a knife is set in the middle. It's kind of dug into the middle of the table. And uh, he starts, the owner starts counting to 10. If you would please, Otto, sir. Roll for initiative. I don't seem to be able to select my token, which means that my initiative won't show up properly. Uh, hang on. I will change that. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. There. That's good. There you go. You can select it now. Nah. 
All right, you got 13.3. Nice. All right. And he gets Uh-oh. 13. Oh, 16. All right. Oops. It's not, Guy. It's not looking good. His name is Guy. He's about to open up the eight gates. You have no chance. Oh, I thought he was going to take us to Flavor Town. Different guy. All right. Uh, so, just any order. So, uh, the owner starts counting from one. And then when he hits 10, you both dash forward. But believe it or not, the guy, even though he looks slightly older, is very fast for his age. And he makes a mad dash and grabs the dagger. Uh, he bends down and picks up the dagger, and that is his turn. Okay. Your turn, Otto. I want to just, like, grab this guy, like, grab... Uh, well, that might be hard with one hand. You know what? No, I just want to, like, kind of body check him off the table. Like, charge <laughs> okay. forward with my shoulder kind of thing and just butt him. Sure. All right, give me a second here. So you're going to try and body check him. That's going to be a roll of your CMB versus his CMD. See. Your combat maneuver. Whoa. Oh, who's that? Whoa. Sounds. I do not know. Alien invasion. That was somebody. That was Sorry. somebody. Hmm? Sorry, was that me? I didn't hear anything. I don't know. It must have been you. Maybe it's, it kind of sounded like it's gone now. The predator reduced a few octaves. <laughs> yeah, it's gone now. Whoever it was. Yeah, we're good. So, so um, my CMB, right? Yes, correct. Your CMB, and he will roll his CMD. Oh, that was almost a one. Bam. Ooh. Okay, nineteen. Nice. Give me a second while I look for his CMD. There it is. Um. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Okay. Um. Yeah. You. You. I'm sorry. I don't have to roll. You just either you beat it or you don't. And you beat it. Well done. Um. So you beat his CMD, which means you're able to body check him as he comes up with the dagger. And you. Uh. Give me a second. While I. Let's see. Does he even have a skill of like? Give me a second. Um, is give me a second even a skill <laughs> not really yeah Ar- Arlen's <laughs> going all Commodore 64 on us yeah Arlen you yes. okay over there you're back now you're okay now sure sort of. alright so you're able to body check him and he falls prone right around here he goes <laughs> And uh, on his action, he basically stands up um, and he's, let's see. So you body checked him. He fell his turn. He's standing up. He can't really stand up and move too much. So what he does is he stands up and he just takes a defensive action with the knife, like just waiting for you to come. OK, uh, I'm going to pick up a gold coin and throw it at his face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, roll me another CMB. Because <laughs> that seems like a combat maneuver. Sweet. <laughs> wow, you beat it again. Uh, you pick up a gold coin and he thinks that you're going to go put it in your purse. So he starts to move forward and then catches a gold coin right in the eye. <laughs> That's so cheap. And he, and he curses. He goes, ah, fuck, ah. And then he goes to swing at you, but he just got hit in the eye. So he <laughs> bonus to swing at you with the knife. Not so good. Um, <laughs> he rolls to hit you. Remember, this is without your armor. Yeah. Not no. that it matters. I think I can just <laughs> use my, my touch AC, right? Basically. Cur- uh, no, no. It's also plus your dodge. So it's not your touch. It's it's a higher than your touch. Dodge It'll is be included just... in touch. Uh, oh, right, right. Yes, yeah. you're correct. So I was thinking flat-footed. Yeah, no, yes. I'm good with touch. Correct. It's your touch AC. Um, but that's still nowhere near enough to hit you. Yeah. As he swings wildly, 
you know, grasping uh, well no he can't grasp to his eye so he just kind of like curses and swings at you and misses completely your turn Okay, I if would he like... rolls a one, can he go to wipe his eye with the dagger? <laughs> <laughs> My eye hurts. Ah! <laughs> I forgot I had a knife. <laughs> you know, in this world, your your enemies are just about that level. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, on a really bad day, I'd probably do that. So I'm not much better. So I'm so want to be blind in this house. Yeah. You're the one who helps me find my glasses. <laughs> as as he comes towards me and misses, I kind of want to like use his momentum to again try to chuck him off the table. Sure. So like you're trying to chuck him off to the side. All right, roll your CMB again. <laughs> Judo move auto over here. Judo move auto. Oh, that didn't work. That is not enough. He's able to kind of shove you <laughs> off a little bit. Um, and uh, he takes this opportunity to make another attack at you with the knife. He swipes it like... Uh, towards one of your legs and rolls oh. a natural 20. Oh boy. Jeez. Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. You have to confirm that, right? So is Guy yep. allowed to confirm that? Since He's he, named, you know, he's named no, Guy. Yeah, he's, yeah, in this situation, I'm going to allow him to confirm it because it's one-on-one -on -one combat type of thing. Mm -hmm. So he rolls to confirm. Oh, geez. That's a confirm. <laughs> Oh boy! All right, oh, you're about to get fucked up. <laughs> Maybe. Let's see. Deal a card to me, and let's see what it says. So this is a slashing card. Give me a second. Sorry, I've got so many windows open here. Wait, isn't a dagger piercing? I'm sorry, piercing. Correct. Is um, that even, is that even a thing on the card? I don't even know. Yes, it is. Double damage and target is fatigued. Mm. Damn, what's fatigue? Okay, put that on there. Uh, give me one second. I'll look it up for you. So that's that's the you said called deep hurting. So I don't remember exactly what all the conditions are. However, hooray, Internet fatigued. Um. Not frightened, fatigued. A fatigued character can neither run nor charge and takes a minus two penalty to strength and dexterity. Um, doing anything that would normally cause fatigue causes the fatigued character to become exhausted. After eight hours of complete rest, the fatigued character no longer feels fatigued. So you can't run, you can't charge, and you have a minus two to your um, strength and dexterity, which basically would mean a minus one to your bonuses. Yeah, minus, those minus one to armor and minus one to attack, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And double damage, which it's only a dagger, so it's only 1d4, but uh, let me get rid of this. What's the damage of an unarmed attack in this? Um, what? If you're not a monk? Well, I don't know. Bad. Am I a monk? Um, no, I don't think so. Could, could I be a monk just for a little bit? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about that. Uh, no, no. Um, damage for a medium-sized creature like yourself uh, for an unarmed strike is one d three. Oh, that's not bad. Mm -mm, it's not bad. Uh, give me a second. All right. What's this double damage? How bleeding am I? You are. Let's find out. So it's one d four plus. Two equals four, say eight, eight, eight points of damage. He basically tears into uh, one of your pecs. Ooh. Not my nipples. <laughs> yep. yep. He's fighting dirty because you threw a gold coin in his eye. <laughs> All right. All right. Your turn, sir. Otto's, Otto's pissed now. I'm just going to. I can imagine. <laughs> punch this guy uh let's see I, it'll be the same attack roll as my morning star but not with tell you what i know what I, i'll just do this this will be a lot easier it's gonna oh, you should straight up punch him huh yeah i'm just gonna deck him there's my all right 17 versus his touch there's no da, way da, da, he da, has da, 17 um... armor uh yeah um give me a second here what no, no, he doesn't. I'm just... Yeah, okay. Fine, <laughs> I was like, fine. guy's got like 22 decks. Like, I don't care. 
<laughs> yeah, you're fighting uh, uh, Van Carlo again. Seriously. <laughs> you just didn't know it. <laughs> He's um, in disguise. He's like, haha, fooled just... you. <laughs> All the gold is mine. Oh, there we go. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, he has nowhere near 17 for for touch AC. So roll damage, sir. It's 1d3 plus whatever your strength is. And remember that minus one to your strength. Yeah. No. All right. Four points of damage to him. OK, so you uh, you clock him pretty good. I mean, you're still a really strong guy, so your your strength bonus alone is the maximum the average person could punch. But guy right. is anything but average. Yep. <laughs> the, yes. Despite despite the name, yes, he is. despite the name, guy is anything but average. He's anything but average. All right. Um, you know, there's so never been like a, an action that? movie where the hero's named Guy. There's an anime where the hero is named Guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's awesome. Uh, all right. He's going to make another attack with his dagger. He's going to push this advantage. He knows that he has the dagger and he knows that uh, he hurt you bad last time. He's going for blood again. And rolls not well. <laughs> A five. So, nope. He completely misses you. What if I, like, like squeeze my peck and squirt blood in his eye? <laughs> Okay, no, I'm just, I'm just punching. That's fine. We'll just, we'll just turn this into a. Uh, typically speaking, that would be a combat maneuver. All right, uh, you hit him again. Okay. Oh, ow! I just stabbed myself with a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask. So no, you just hold him, him, not yourself. Ow! You hit him again for another four points of damage. So yeah, you, you basically just, I, I imagine like you punch him in the same side of the face again. <laughs> well, it's the same arm, yeah. so it almost have to be. Yeah, it's like you punch, bam, misses with dagger, bam again. <laughs> he uh, he growls and strikes at you with the dagger again. This is tur- this is devolved into just straight that's up a- trying to hit each other. Yeah, that's a miss. <laughs> is that a- that's a miss? He misses again. <laughs> okay, this wow. time I'm gonna like yell like stay down and hit him again. That's a hit. <laughs> Do another four points of damage. Come on. <laughs> Six points of damage. So you hit him a third time. <laughs> this time he actually drops down to a knee. Um, Because <laughs> he does not look good. Um, So your third blow to the side of his face. This time blood flies out of his mouth and he drops to a knee. And he growls. And uh, then... Knowing that this is not going so well for him, all of a sudden, he tries to bull rush you off the table. So he's going to be rolling a combat mm-hmm. bonus. Uh, what's your CMD? 20. Oh, uh, okay, no, minus, gets... minus two, so 18. What's FFCMD? Uh, FF? I have two CMDs. One's a CMD. Flat gives... footed. Flat oh, okay, footed. Okay, You're okay. not. Say so 18. All right, so your, your CMD is 18. Uh. Just oh, enough. Shit. Just enough. Uh, he is not able to completely knock you off the table, but he does knock you prone. And since he's this way, he's still so you can get up, but you would incur an attack of opportunity. Unless all you do is spend the action getting up. Yeah, and under the idea of you being very careful. Yeah, no, that's that's good. That's fine. Like, I'll just get up and Okay. Disengage or whatever to not put the attack. Uh, he he spits out some blood and uh, attempts to knock you off the table again. Kind of grins this time. Where you see that there's a tooth missing from where you punched him and <laughs> fails that one. <laughs> not grinning anymore, huh? He he like he like goes to do what he thinks is a final shove, and Otto just doesn't move. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he's really just gently caressing Otto's titties for no reason. <laughs> his face is like pressed up against his <laughs> chest. <laughs> this time I'm going to go for a kick right above the kneecap and again yell, stay down. Oh, it was a miss, wasn't it? Uh, No, that is just enough to hit. Holy smokes. Yeah. That is just enough to hit him. Crush his kneecap. 
Wow. Um, okay. He uh, he goes down again on the one knee. So he's not prone, but he's, uh, you know, almost like he's kneeling in front of you. He's not doing well at all. Um, I really hope he doesn't make me kill him. Fucking well, guy. this is all, you know, unarmed strikes is non-lethal damage. Okay, good. That's good. So if you knocked him down to zero, he would just be unconscious. Now, with his dagger, that's a different story. That's fine. Um, and he's starting, he's starting to get pretty desperate, so he just swings at you wildly with the dagger, because he's not in a good, he's like, he has no leverage to try and push you, and plus, last time he tried, it was like trying to push a tree, so he just swings wildly with his dagger, and gets 15. That's a hit. Okay. And that is simply. Give me a second here. Da, 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 da. Oh, I was just gonna come back damage. to you guys, just all bleeding and shit. It's like, what the hell happened to you? <laughs> he does max damage. Seven points of damage. All right. Your turn. God damn you! Bah, that's a hit. That's enough to hit him. <laughs> All right, do damage, please. <laughs> and with one more punch, every single punch has been to like the right side of his face. With one more final punch, you just hit him. He spins around, does the little, <laughs> and then crashes down off the table unconscious. Sweet. Bringing home the bacon. And That's as right. you do that, everyone starts cheering. <sighs> Except for the people on his side that go, boo! And I, I and calmly and dignified begin to pick up my gold. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with that, the owner announces you the winner. Um, and uh, half of the gold is paid to you. So there was... Give me a second here. Uh... As I look at how much this actually was, uh, 32 gold pieces on the table. So you get 16 of them and the other half are paid out to the people on your side of the table who bet. So you just made yourself a cool 16 gold. That's nowhere near enough to buy it's a like, healing potion. That's like one hit point, <laughs> one gold for each hit point I lost. <laughs> yeah, Totally yep. worth it. <laughs> And uh, with that, uh, when you get off the table, uh, a couple of the people on your side of the table go, that was amazing. Just a Pam, Pam, oh, let me buy you a drink, stranger. Fine, but don't call me Pam. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you confused and goes, oh, all right. <laughs> and he like leads you over to the bar and uh, buys you another ale. Excellent. All as well. Okay, someone else take uh, over. Yeah, I was going to say, you mind if we switch back yeah, over please. to uh, Amelia and Arlen? Okay. Uh, Amelia, Arlen, we're going to pick right back up where she's like, perhaps you have a fetish. Oh, God. Well, I don't have a fetish per se, but um, man, I can't remember what that guy recommended. Man, what was it that Darvanya uh, was saying? Oh, I don't know if you remember that guy. He was telling me something that was really good. You, you know who I'm talking about. He he comes here all the time. He's a diplomat from Chalaxia. Ah, uh, yes. You're talking about Darwin Gios. Gios. Yeah, yeah, that guy. He He, he... was talking about this place. Well, he is one of our better clients. What was he suggesting? Ah, I know. Just one moment. <laughs> Arlen kind and, of takes uh, a big gulp, but she's like, has no idea what she just got herself into. And uh, Madam uh, Halvire says, <clears throat> uh, so Siri, dear. Siri, dear. Yes. Um... Go get Samson. <laughs> Cut his hair. Cut his hair in the night. 
<laughs> crap. And uh, Halavara just uh, smiles sweetly at Arlen, not saying a word, <laughs> as one of the girls in the lineup uh, goes away and then comes back um, with a very um, big half orc man. <laughs> Does he have luscious locks? <laughs> no, actually, he's uh, he's half balding. Um, he has oh. one of his uh, his uh, teeth, like his tusk like teeth is broken off halfway uh, and he has scars all up and down his body. <laughs> and uh, he he has around his neck a, a cat of nine tails. Well, you can pick him. Um. Good luck with that. <laughs> that's, oh, my God. That's some good times right there. <laughs> Amelia oh, was really? like pretending to take a drink and then just. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, as as Samson walks up and Halvira goes, well, it's not usual you hear. Wait, wait. <laughs> and the bald elf bartender rushes up and goes, <laughs> what are. Look, no. <laughs> All right. Sweetheart. And he looks straight at Arlen and says, you. Not your first time. Remember what I said? <laughs> Did you not listen to anything I said? I, I I didn't know what I was getting into. I was uh going off of a friend's recommendations, and that clearly was uh the wrong thing. Oh, darling, if they suggested this to you for your first time, they are no friend of yours. <laughs> Elvira. It's her first time. And Helvira goes, oh. <laughs> Samson, uh, you may go. And like Samson turns around <laughs> and just walks all the way back. He's just sobbing um, all the way out. He's just sobbing. He made the poor orc <laughs> cry. Uh, um, um, Arlen and Amelia. Mm-hmm. Roll me uh Hang on, give me a second here. I'm trying to see what, what what it would be you would actually roll here. Uh, <laughs> roll me a perception check, please. Okay. Oh god. Um, where is that? Uh, By the way, uh, in the team section. You need an avatar in Roll20, man. You're just like the default blue squiggles. Yeah. I know. That's oh, too wow. artistic I have those, for me. I have those collapsed. I forget about those. Same. All right. You rolled an 11, Amelia. What'd you, oh, wow. A natural 20. You have a I did it. To perfect. Arlen, you, for whatever reason, <laughs> you know, nothing really strikes you out here. Amelia? Man, Samson's really close to Samus. And you know what? Now that you look at him, they share some remarkable similarities. Even though Samus is a full-blown orc and Samson's a half-orc, you would pay money that these two are related somehow. Wait, who's Samus? Samus is Timronian's mute assistant. Oh, okay, that guy. No. Okay, sorry, I'm really bad with names, so just okay. That's fine. That's fine. Bear with me. <clears throat> okay. The 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 orc that got very excited showing magic tricks to the kids until yeah yeah no I I know the guy a fireball yeah. I just didn't know um, his, he was named after a yeah. you know a bionic. No, Amelia, you you put hunt. money on on that. Huh. huh. <laughs> And Helvira goes, um, after Simon sleeps, she turns back around to Arlen and goes, well then, perhaps uh, not the recommendation of your dear ambassador. He did always have a bit of a vindictive streak. I'm curious, are you like an ex-employee or something? <laughs> no, um, my father crossed path paths with him a while back. Um, Your father? Yes. And who might that be? Havara says, like, crossing her arms behind her. Uh, James Oslo? He's one of the uh, minor nobles in the area. Jim. Uh, Helvira.
Bob? Sorry, I cut out. Oh, uh, Helvira and the bartender share a glance, and then she turns back to Arlen and says, yes, I know him well. You yes. didn't take Jim Sheridan? <laughs> <laughs> no, the family name is Oslo, thank you. After the... Uh... Yeah, no, she used his real name. <laughs> yeah. I, and uh, like Helvira so. Helvira goes, I know him well. Though he does not have quite uh, the same tastes. I I wouldn't be surprised. He He's not a man that could, well, do much of anything. But that's a discussion for another time. Yes, perhaps. Well, my dear, I'm sorry, but uh, this ambassador of yours... I'm afraid he was playing a bit of a prank on you. Rather mean-spirited one, if I do say so myself. Look, if you're still looking for a good time, uh, might I suggest uh, one of uh, these lovely individuals? They'll be more than happy to transform your life. Well, perhaps... Um... At another time, I, uh, do you, would you by chance have any other information on Dervanier? I, uh, need a way to get back at him. And, uh, his, uh, his rather cruel joke perhaps has made me think that I need to sit this one out and, uh, Maybe watch and see what's going on before I make any more actions. Roll me a bluff check. Wow. Roll the 27 on the bluff check. Jesus <laughs> um, Helvira's face softens as she looks at you. And she goes, All right, boys and girls. I'm sure there are other customers that need attending. And the lineup just kind of disperses. And uh, she comes and sits down in between you and Amelia and drapes an arm over both of your shoulders. And she says, oh, my dear, that man is a cruel, mean bastard. And if you're looking for a way to get a little payback, let's see what we can do. And hmm? I didn't say anything. No. Oh, she goes, I well, a man in his position uh must have any manner of things that would embarrass him and well if you are uh, an important diplomat you don't want to be publicly embarrassed. I happen to know that and she kind of looks around and then lowers her voice the good ambassador when he comes he always hires two people Samson as you saw before and one of my scribes to shall we say immortalize the night he has a weird pleasure in having them read out to him in subsequent visits Hmm. in very graphic detail I might add and illustrations yeah but does he bottom is the question (laughs) the floating ethereal voice of (laughs) Miri Sorry. That's I'm so fine. glad you knew that was her. <laughs> I'm getting good at telling the difference ish. Um, and uh, yeah, so she, she says that she has her arms draped around you. She looks very sympathetic. Uh, 
uh, some good money for perhaps one of these uh, transcripts that might be uh, used as blackmail? Well, unfortunately, my dear, when it comes to that kind of thing, I pass on such things to Dervargo. It helps pay the bills, you could say. And Dervargo about it? Yes. You should speak to him. Though... I can't convince him to give you one. I most certainly could get you in to see him. Uh, well, for my purposes, I'm sure the uh, information alone would come in quite useful the next time I run into him. But... Uh, <laughs> oh, sweetheart, if I were you, I would... Uh, Put them as posters all around the city. The illustrations are quite detailed. Hmm. I'm sure that would uh, provide me with much more than an, of an education than I was looking for for tonight. Um, but perhaps the uh, person that has uh, ascertained my services to find more information on this diplomat would be interested. Uh, would I be able to speak to DeVargo? I'm sorry. The person who did what? Who is looking for this blackmail? I thought you were looking for this blackmail. Well, I am the one here looking. But, uh, her eyes immediately grow cold. I thought that you were an innocent and played soul. I did not know that you were sent here by an employer to look for blackmail on one of my patrons. No, 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 no. I... I... I haven't been sent to look for information on him. But I, uh, I know somebody who would be interested if, say, I could get this information and I could make a little bit of money for myself. And perhaps you or DeVargo as well. I mean, knowing the, that he uh, intentionally played this trick on me, I would. Well, I don't want him to do such things again. And so. If I could perhaps see copies of this or have it affect him. In a more visceral way, as his little trick would have played out on me. Well. I mean, I don't think I could inflict as much pleasure as Samson was going to do on the diplomat? Uh, roll me another bluff check, please. <laughs> yeah, roll yourself out of this situation. <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to say a bunch of stuff. <laughs> uh, her eyes remain cold and she says, you specifically said that someone sent you to look for this information. Now you're telling me they didn't. And originally I thought that you were just some poor person that was duped by him. I think, whoever you are, it's about time for you and your friend to go. What a whore. <laughs> Otto's disembodied voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you uh, have a pleasant night, ma'am. You as well. And so she, uh, or a little kind of walk back to find the other people. All right. Uh, Amelia, what do you do? Oh, God. 
Do it. Ch- chase after the orc. <laughs> he's he's your man. No. <laughs> no, she doesn't have a man or a woman or anyone. She doesn't want anyone. But you could you have a half orc. He could, he could be a balding half orc. <laughs> He could also provide details, maybe, or information. And if he's anything like Samson's brother, or Samus's brother... Then he'll be really fun. And maybe not quite as bright. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys are trying to convince the wrong character here. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a little bit. <laughs> uh, no, Amelia, what do you do? Um... Oh god. Um Amelia stands she... hesitantly. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Um she's going to um take Arlen's arm briefly and say, I'll I'll meet you outside. Just just one moment. Does she does she go outside or yeah, does Arlen go? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Arlen continues to walk outside. She doesn't want to piss off the uh, dominatrix. <laughs> we the don't madam. know her style. You mean, you mean Amelia? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> no, the, the madam, Madam Helvira. Yes. Mad- madam Amelia? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right, so Arlen leaves. Um, Amelia would turn back to Madame Elvira and, um, say, may I speak to you for a moment, please? You have exactly one minute, and I have many things to do. Yes, yes, of course. Um, and she starts to stammer, and then she pauses, and she kind of straightens up and goes I apologize for um, you see this as as a deception and it isn't but my friend doesn't really have the best words to use a great number of times Um, we were sent here by a friend, but he did. God, what's his name? Fucking the diplomat. Uh, Darvany. Hang on, I'll re. J- just, just type it out, okay? Darvainie yeah, I'm gonna re put it in there. There you go. Darvany Gaio Geos Ampri. Jeez. Yep. Fucking names. In the yeah. Wow. Yep. With this, I know. But yeah. Um, but yeah, yes, we were sent by someone else, but Darvigny was the one who gave the recommendation and she took it on good faith. I am genuinely thankful for your barkeeps, um, stepping in. I I worry about her constantly. She, uh, roll me a diplomacy check, please. Okay. She says, roll me a diplomacy check, (laughs) darling. That's immersive, dude. Wow. All right. Okay. I can do it. RNGs, tell me how much I believe her. All right. Um, an 18. Got it. She, her expression softens a little bit, and she says, Be that as it may, her words made her highly suspicious. You were sent here looking for information, but you weren't. Maybe it's a misunderstanding, and I can believe that ambassador being the kind of cruel spirit to do such a thing. Nevertheless, tell your friend that sent you that I will not be a wellspring of information on my clients. And if in the future she actually puts a hand on your cheek, you wish to come back, 
for pleasure and not for business. We can find someone for you. I promise you it'll be worth it. What do you think? <laughs> um, she doesn't say that. Um, uh, she nods and says, thank you. I just... <laughs> She doesn't think when she speaks, and it tends to run together into nonsense. I noticed. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Talking some serious shit. (laughs) Yeah, she's totally retarded. (laughs) (laughs) I I have... No such thing. (laughs) I have many things to do. I wish you a good evening. Yeah, yes, of, of course. Good evening. And, and she'll she's, nod. She's going to speed walk the fuck out of there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Actually, so... no, rephrase. Mm-hmm. She's going to start speed walking out of there, about turn, put the cup that she briefly <laughs> sipped back onto the bar and then leave. All right. Uh, Miri, just so you know, so far, you've seen Weary's Otto. Not here. No, I know. Miri's... Oh, she's not here here. Yeah. Oh, okay. I hear, I hear. Um, Well, then real quick. Otto, going back to you, about this time, um, this would have been plenty of time to have the knivesies and would say this is about when they're buying you a drink. Well, well, actually, could, um, I, could I interject real quick about something I, I sure. wanted, wanted to bring up? Is there any way I can get some kind of <clears throat> token or evidence or proof of something that I want to give on knivesies? Because, of course, you know, out of character. Everyone's going to forget that I did that. Sorry, you didn't want to interrupt oh. me. I mean, you've got a sick scar now. I see. Yeah, but um, anybody could have a sick scar, right? I could, have, I could have knifed myself. I mean, just crazy, right? Like, anyway. So I'm just curious if there's if there's any kind and of... I've got, got my game. nipple chopped off playing <laughs> knifesies. That's right. Uh, the, the owner would take the dagger... Uh, on the table and kind of flip it over to the head so where he's holding the blade and offer the handle to you and you'll see that on the bottom of the hilt is um, uh, the same symbol that's on the sign for the twin tigers beauty and he says give me two gold for the cost of this of course but only those who win at knives have the chance to purchase one of these done and done all right got me a knives dagger so 14 gold and a knives dagger. <laughs> All right. Woo. Okay, got that out of the way. Go ahead with what you were saying. Uh, well, they, they just would have uh, bought you a drink and be sharing a drink with you, and they'd be talking about um, equal parts, your fight, telling you how your fight went because, you know, you weren't you there, there or anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also uh, equal parts talking about other great knives matches that have been held here. Uh, I would start boasting and talking about how I could probably beat Devargo at Knivesies, I guess. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, they'd go, <laughs> oh, Devargo doesn't play Knivesies anymore. Besides, he's got all those spiders around him. And someone else goes, yeah, I heard his half mother, or his mother was half spider. His half mother was a spider. <laughs> yeah, and the other one goes, "You're drunk. You don't know what you're talking about. Half spider. Yeah. What the hell is a half spider? That's what I heard. I ain't scared In of no case. spiders. Just the other day, I crushed a spider the size of a dog with my with my mace, <laughs> which is a true story, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um." They 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 kind of laugh. Oh, oh no! And they they call you different names as if like they all seem to think they know your name. It's like why are we carrying this like, guy? Ah. <laughs> and then they go. No, but seriously though, I I, I once saw Dervargo do an Ives, but that was ten years ago. Now ever since he started running this place, he's too high and proper for that kind of thing. Though I hear. He still very much enjoys watching others. And uh, one the one that originally offered to buy you the drink goes, 
No, that part, that part's true. You ever get invited in his back room, you'll see that happen a lot. He has his own little knives table, likes to test his uh, new thugs out that way. Joys the blood, I think. Bet there'd be a lot of money at that table. Money? No, no, the money is not the prize at that table. Prestige. That's the prize at that table. To show Der Vargo that you have what it takes, that's uh, worth more than gold, Pally. All right. How, how how would I get myself to that table? It sounds like maybe I get some more uh, worthy competition. Roll me a diplomacy check. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Does he get a bonus because they're drunk? Yeah. No, but I set the uh, difficulty accordingly. Oh, okay. oh geez. Oh, my God. Well, uh, zero. God damn All right. It. I rolled a zero. So how did that go? <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I got invited in there because I was working. Okay. So, okay, so here's what you do. You find yourself one of them street gangs. Start off as a first level enforcer like I did. Beat up. I think you cut out. And away, and then DeVargo will <laughs> kill him and uh, take over the Enterprise, and at which point he might invite you in, and maybe you can play Knivesies. Man, that sounds like a lot of work. I don't really have a lot of time, you know? I'm sort of just here for the night. <laughs> oh, wow. a long con, man. Get with the program. Uh, hang on, real quick. Sib, sorry, um, you've got a lot of background feedback that's getting worse and worse. Oh, okay. I yeah, like it's, it's weird because it goes away yeah. sometimes and it's there sometimes. Yeah. I'm not sure what you're changing. Uh, nothing. You, it's. Is it the phone? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, gone now. It is gone now. Yeah. Yeah. Can I can I see anyone I know in range here? Oh, you know what I think it is. Hang on, real quick. I think it's the longer you don't talk, the worse it gets. Okay. I know some microphones do that. Um, oh, yeah, because it, it, it increases its, um, exactly. its uh, yeah. pickup because it thinks, yeah. It thinks you're talking and it can't hear you. So it increases its pickup. Okay. Um, Fancy. Let me change the settings. So just, so just shout off. really loud into it every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, just other <laughs> <no> warning. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Good. Ireland's disembodied voice appears <laughs> <laughs> every once in a while. I, you hear, uh, Sorry, Otto, you you were saying? Do I he the, see, because everybody seems like these guys are all leaving their other boat, do I happen to see Weary, well, she's just sitting there, but do I happen to see Amelia or Arlen? Um, no, right now you're inside the casino, so... Oh, you, see, see what's going on. I, I thought I thought it was like in between the two buildings, you know, like here, but uh, okay, okay, so I don't oh, see anybody. Oh, well... I mean, sure, we could say the conversation kind of moves outdoors, in which case you would see, uh, and Weary, you would see this too. You see Arlen walking out, looking frustrated, and then about 30 seconds later, Amelia speed walking <laughs> out of the... Uh, Establishment. The oh, and yes. actually, I should mention, I got my armor back, right? My my stuff? Oh, yeah, 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 okay, absolutely. Good. You did. Yeah, you got good. it back and were able to put it back on. Okay, beauty. So I would like. Don't want to have your titty uh, scar. Well, I just don't want to lose my armor. <laughs> you know, this could have been a, just a big ploy to steal all my shit. That happens. So I'd like yeah. wave. By the way, uh, I just... people. You know, mm -hmm. if I could see Arlen or or Amelia, was like, trying to wave them down. Sure. So you guys see, uh, I'd say Arlen and Amelia. Mary is probably a little too far away to see it, but you would see Otto waving you down. So would I be able to see uh, Mary as well? Yeah, absolutely. You guys could definitely see her. So basically, Otto's like here. You're here. Miri's here, just slightly up above you. So Amelia's I was going to make a beeline to Otto. <laughs> and and I would uh, wave Miri over as I go towards Otto to try and get all of us in one place. The um, entire D and D party in one place. You speak nonsense. That's this never happens. All right, hang on, I'm gonna get rid of my sea serpent. 
If they're all in one place, that won't work. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you're one. on a boat, technically. <laughs> and and Arlen will also very quietly um, tell what little bit of intel she learned and then casually gloss over the fact that she totally screwed it up. <laughs> she totally fucked that up. <laughs> Uh, I would explain that, or let more convince that we didn't implicate the ambassador. Oh, sorry, you cut out yeah. first. We. Oh yeah, so uh, so Arlen kind of shares the knowledge that Darvargo probably has certain documents that would be highly embarrassing for the ambassador if made public. Mm-hmm. And Amelia is going to add in. Perhaps next time we should find a story and stick with it. Uh, I, yeah. I I would let these smooth talkers know that the Vargo likes knivesies and has a table in there to play on, but don't have a way I'm in. Gonna roll knowledge local. Yeah, everyone roll knowledge knivesies. local to see if you know what knivesies are. Like all these finger range, wigglers know what knivesies it. is. Well, no, Mary, uh Arlen was uh, waving you over, so unless you chose not to. Oh, I know knives these. <laughs> That's what idiots play. <laughs> Ouch. Stings no, harder than a I, knife to no, the chest. Um, I'll acknowledge Arlen from a distance, but I'll stay where I am. I can acknowledge you from a distance. That's harsh. Wow. That's the second cold shoulder Arlen's <laughs> got, like, in the past two minutes. <laughs> Seriously. And I thought I was going to a brothel. I didn't think I'd get so many cold shoulders. <laughs> so, so yeah, so yeah, you guys, you both know what knivesies is. Why would you play that? <laughs> because I want to. I don't know. It's like battle is good, right? Uh, both um, Amelia Arlen, roll me a perception check, please. Oh, God. I've already passed one. You want me to risk another? You, you yep. guys are aware my patron deity is Gorum, right? He's sort of the <laughs> deity of, of combat. So I'm just... Not by choice, though. Right, but I if... Do you think like I'm going to get rid of... only. Do you, oh. do you think I'm going to get rid of this curse by not doing what he wants? All right. Um, Arlen, it's like you're not even paying attention right now. Uh <laughs> <laughs> you don't notice crushed. anything. Amelia, who apparently is really on top of her game right now, you notice that um, the the leather underneath Arlo's scale armor on his chest is soaked because that <laughs> wound's still bleeding. <laughs> no care has been given to it. It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> <laughs> Pour some like, beer on it. Your bloody arms <laughs> off! In the middle of explaining, and she's just like... What happened? And she like grabs the armor and starts like trying to move it aside. Like, did you? What? No, we're. It's this is ridiculous. It's called knivesies. Yes, I know, it's and like... it's asinine. Okay, but it could get us in to see, you know, Devargo. Just how like these? I try to ask these guys how to get. They mention it, but I, I try to ask it, and I, I don't know. I'm an idiot. Help me out. So you want? <laughs> To get stabbed to get in. I don't Again. care. I, look, I, I'm cursed. Does the does the phrase nothing to lose have any meaning to you? Well, clearly you have something to lose. You're bleeding. Yes, I have blood to lose. And I'm willing to lose it. Help me out. You got any other ideas? Uh, Arlen says, you know, perhaps, uh, Otto, perhaps you maybe want to try the uh, upfront approach. You know, just, I mean. Well, you just want to storm but... his, his little bunker up there? Not so much. I was thinking more DeVargo is in the um, business of blackmail or selling information or gathering information at the very least. You know, uh, perhaps he'd be willing to sell if. Uh, you told him that we know he has some of these rather risque uh, documents. So you want me to say something accusatory that could cause a fight 
or even a brawl. Well, it's not exactly because I'll do that. That sounds I mean, it's great. It's not exactly accusatory. We know it's true. It's more a matter of figuring out what Zavargo's price is. Okay, but what am I just going to say this to the the guards in front of his cabin? Well, you're the one person who could get away with it. Anybody else got another idea? Okay, I'll go do it. Sounds good to me. Let's go. Let's go to the his cabin and just, you know, stick it to the man. <laughs> uh, are you sure he, that that looks? You're bleeding a lot. Where's Miri? <laughs> I I saw her over on the uh, middle part of the eels in. Why would you tell him? I mean, you're not here yet. No. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you can feel the disapproval. <laughs> Would you feel my titty? <laughs> Weary, I have an owie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there, you know, last time I looked, there were a lot of people just kind of milling around there. You know, we could. Okay, well, you know what? Go and try to. Yeah, let's let's go over there and in between boats, sort of when possibly maybe no one is looking, I'm gonna cast heal on myself, which I can do. I have that ability somewhere on this giant character sheet of nonsense. Where is it? Okay, boom. <laughs> Cure light wounds. It didn't even himself. it didn't even roll. No, nope. is it? You don't need to roll for your. Oh, you need to yeah, roll the do dice. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna say it's not like you need to roll to hit yourself. Plus with one for castrol versus three. So there, I heal myself for nine. Yeah. There you go. That's one more than the damage done by the blade. No, because I got hit twice. Well, I'm saying that for, for that first attack. Oh yeah. You know what? I'm gonna but cast that, it again. But that doesn't count because that that knife is yours now. Covered in my own blood. Okay, I'm full. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, all that's left is the dark blood stain <laughs> that Cure Light Wounds does not get rid of. I'm I'm ready to, you know, cause a whole bunch of more mayhem at so, the guard's place. Actually, to 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 basically Arlen and Amelia, you see him chant something and touch you know and, and touch his chest, and then he says he's fine. But I mean, as far as you can tell. Nothing's changed. Uh, mm -hmm. It's still dark red, wet spot on his armor. <laughs> well, wait, wait. Did, was it you or didn't you pick, uh, pick up uh, press the digitation, Arlen? Yes. Do you need me to uh, clean off some of those blood stains if you think you're fine? It might help our cause. If we're trying to intimidate these guys being covered in blood, I mean, that's what's more intimidating than being covered in blood. Let's be honest. It's your blood. They don't, know, they don't know that. Hey, if you're standing, walking, talking, whatever, covered in your own blood, who's not going to be intimidated by that? Seriously. Go to work one day, ask for a raise, covered in your own blood. See how that works. Well, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure intimidation is the tack did, that we want to take first off. Did you even see Fight Club? No. Uh, oh, I thought that's what we were going for. You want me to be diplomatic with these people? Seriously? Okay, I'll try. Watch me roll a zero, though. Just saying. All right, so what's the... Do you guys have a plan of action? Do you have an idea of what you're doing next? Or, well, let me go first real quick. Mary, what you doing? Um, <laughs> don't post that from me. Sorry. <laughs> And you're employed to me, not them, you weirdo. <laughs> Anyways, um, so Mori has been more and more impatient, has appeared to become more and more impatient as time has worn on. Mm -hmm. um, she's now tapping her foot, checking the Uh, once you start like your own damn business, please. I know she's not <laughs> <Once>, watching. <laughs> uh, 
once you start tapping your foot, one of the guards at the door will say, Hey, Owly. Yeah. Missing some hot date or something? <laughs> that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. I await an invitation. I am here on business. Oh, she still, she still thinks she's going to get in to see Nervargo. <laughs> well, Ali, I hope you got all night. No, but I have coin. Good for you. For you too, I suppose. Should you choose to be wise? Aha. Uh-huh. Listen, Aldi, you're not the first one to come up here and offer money to go see the ball. Thanks, but no thanks. Well, hold on. You you cut out there and we didn't yeah, do any of that. You cut out that oh. boss. Oh. Um you're not the first one to try and offer money to see the boss. Uh, hang on a second. Give me just a moment here. Yeah. And they would say, um, if the boss ever found out that we were accepting bribes to go see him, we'd be uh, fed to the over flung overboard with the jigsaw sharks. Hmm. Regardless, I don't need to see him. It's pretty poor taste, I believe, to discuss business on the first date. Whatever you say, Ali. Would would we be there by this time, or are we still approaching? Sure, we could say that you approach right at that time. The whole party's together? What? 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 Attacked by eight dragons. We can take on anything as a group. (laughs) You could take on like four imps. At least least four imps. Yeah, even these two like lousy guards. Maybe like six Ben Castrikins. Nato says, oh, hey, Miri, what are you doing here? Waiting. Oh. Wait. What you're waiting for? You to finish what you're doing. Or who, it doesn't matter to me. Oh, I see what she did there. Otto looks at Arlen. See, that was both glare. an owl joke and a brothel joke. But I'm, t- I'm very proud of that. <laughs> I, I Man, you thinking. showed those guards up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Leave her alone. She's an old lady. Otto is going to show his dagger to the two guards and be like, hey, I just want Handley down there. Uh, I hear your boss Handley. there likes to watch uh, some Knivesy's games. Any chance I can uh, get an opportunity to impress? Diplomacy Look at this. Diplomacy Not a scratch on me. Oh, that's their blood by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Roll me a a, a diplomacy check, please. Oh, my diplomacy is so bad. No. Um, One of the guards crosses his arms and goes, (laughs) any other one could go in there, win a knivesy match and get a knife like that. That ain't enough to impress the boss or to get through this door. Like I said before, invitation only. Huh. Unless you got a damn good reason. Okay. <clears throat> Otto's going to back away from the guy and go whisper into Harlan's ear. What's this blackmail thing? Who's? Why does DeVargo care if we know about some ambassador's you know, perversions? What's my angle here? Well, other than the fact that we'd be willing to pay DeVargo good money for uh, some of those copies of uh, pictures and whatnot. Do you think he wants money? I would imagine so. I mean... Well, I think I think Van Castrican had told us that he already has something on the diplomat that he's trying to sell. 
That's why we're here. Oh, okay. 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 I just don't remember what it was. Squee, I don't remember if you told us. And I just no. don't remember. It's no, really actually, he didn't say that he had him. He said that Van Carlo was hoping that because the ambassador frequents this area a lot and he tends to have loose control, that it's very likely, given the type of person Dervargo is, that he would have something. But he, Van Carlo himself isn't positive that there is something there to gotcha. be gotten. Okay. All right. My okay. Bad. Otto is going to say, you guys hang on. I will be right back. And I'm going to go duck out of sight somewhere, possibly in the brothel place. And I'm going to use a disguise kit. But I don't look like Knives guy anymore. And then I'm going to... I mean, it wouldn't matter anyways. But... Well, I might have to wait longer. I have a disguise kit, all right? Yeah. Let me play. So, um... <laughs> you... <laughs> You walk back in there, and you go to Wait, the corner, and you start... I disguise myself as Jim Sheridan in the novel. Oh, my God. Oh, nice. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> uh, so you go in there, and um, uh, a pleasant-looking, a slightly plump um, young human girl. I mean, when I say young, I mean, like, 20s. Comes up to you and says, hey, handsome, you... Um, uh, and like you're like using your disguise kit right now, and she's like, "Okay," and she just like walks away. <laughs> Good, yeah. Not don't, sure don't, what to make of that. Don't don't mind me. Just uh, <clears throat> just freshening up. <laughs> Some guy ducks into the brothel, starts putting on a disguise kit. <laughs> I'm yeah. just imagining him like have having half put on a fake mustache. Yeah, like a like breathing. a handlebar mustache and a monocle. <laughs> Hey, some people are into role playing. Yeah, <laughs> especially in brothels. Thing. Don't judge That's right. me. That's right. Okay. All right. And then I would come back to the guards. What point I would introduce myself as uh, Jim Sheridan, and I'm looking to uh, purchase something that would help me against my arch nemesis, complicated name guy. Div- div- <laughs> Diver- where the hell did it go? Darvanie. Darvanie. Oh, man. I'm never going to remember that. Darvanie. And I hear that uh, Devargo has some dirt on Devarnie? <laughs> Can Arlen help or aid him? Yeah, I was going to say, who would like to aid him and how would you like to do Amelia's going to aid him after she realizes it's Otto. <laughs> So Arlen's gonna say, just add, you know, um, we heard that Devargo has some, um, perhaps some pictures and, uh, scrolls or scribed words that, uh, might be of a compromising nature that we would be willing to pay quite handsomely for. All right, Amelia, what, what would you be doing? Uh, she's gonna walk up next to Otto and say as sweetly as she can manage, we would be incredibly grateful if you could arrange an audience. Okay. And, Murray, are you gonna help Otto? Nope, he's on his own. <laughs> Tapping yeah, okay, that foot. <laughs> Par right, for the um, course. All right. Uh, uh, Amelia and Arlen, please roll me a uh, a diplomacy check and get above a DC 10. Okay. Amelia does it. Yeah. 20. Arlen. And then Arlen. Okay, uh, so Otto, you get to roll. Uh, you get to add plus four to your diplomacy check, yeah. which is like a plus three for you. Yeah, I see what you did there, talking shit. Uh, uh, <clears throat> fuck, fucking what? What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm not, three, roll I'm not good at this. I'm really just. <laughs> <laughs> you rolled a natural one on a fake die. <laughs> you want to try that again? Yeah, let's try. Let's give it one more go. 
<laughs> oh my god, at least you got it out of your system, knock on wood. What, you actually want me to roll again? Mm -hmm. Yes! That was a, that was a 1d30! <laughs> That's not... Hey, yeah, typo for the win! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Look, 15. honestly, I, mean, I don't know. It, it's possible that the, the okay. Well, um, I typed that in manually, like I did the slash roll one d twenty plus. 3. Oh, I see, I see. I actually made a typo. Fine, we'll still go with the second roll. So that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> one of the guards goes. <clears throat> you got money. Would we be here without it? <laughs> All right, so let me rephrase the question, doll. You got a lot of money. <laughs> Again, would we be here without it? Did I mention I'm a noble? Jim Sheridan. One second. And uh, the guard slips behind the door. And uh, you still, as you all got to the door too, you could hear from inside. Discord is really sucking tonight because you you cut out at here from inside again, cavern or the, the the casino. But you do hear some in there, and then the guard comes back out. All right, the boss says he's willing to give you a minute, but you better make it worth his time. And if you don't, well, let's just hope for your sake you do. And then he opens the door and motions you inside. I, I, I point to my dagger at the guy who threatened us as we go in. Uh, and he goes, just shrugs. <laughs> yeah, All right. Well, am I invited? You're part of the group? Well, yeah, they, they came, basically motioned the whole group in. Gotcha. You just kind of, you know, walk in behind us. At this point, they're probably sick of me sitting there, so. One of them makes a kissy face at Muri as she goes past. I'm worried that's her eyelashes. Does Muri have a beak? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, there'd be no kissing there. It'd be difficult. Anyway. You can smooch a beak. It just can't really smooch back properly. You ever seen two birds kiss? Excuse me, I have a bird and I kiss her all the time. And she makes kissy noises back. Yeah. Very and cute. and Weary is a bird. Yeah. IRL. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> on to Devargo. <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah. So on to Devargo. So you guys uh, um Give me a second here as I move you over. Oh, new map. Woo. New map. Maps mean fighting, right? Sometimes. Holy, there's five bros. Six bros. Oh, there was a die covering the sixth bro. He was hiding. Let's try not to fight if we can avoid it, people. I mean, I don't think that would go very well for us. Well, then you guys better do the talking. Uh, um, because you know, I roll, I roll ones on a one d thirty. So, yes, yeah, clearly we'll there like that. Uh, so let me go ahead and move your tokens over. Anybody want to tell me what to say or not to say, or anybody else want to speak this time? I'm perfectly happy if you offer me as a knives he's competitor. Otherwise, I don't really know. I'm having I'm having a somewhat difficult time following this whole blackmail plot thing. You may have uh, noticed. Amelia will take the lead. <laughs> Give me one second, Marie. I gotta go grab you. Okay. Because you weren't uh, in the last map that I. Uh was pulling characters from. So, so, uh, so while I'm uh, doing that... Real quick, mm -hmm. while you're... Oh, you already did. Um, so the people in here are the people I saw come in, right? Uh, four of them, yes. There's two others that you, you had not seen. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
you guys are gain, given entry to a large room that once looked like it was once a captain's cabin, but has now been converted into a throne room of, of sorts. Uh, the walls are thick with spider webs in which uh, dozens of spiders scuttle, some as large as a fist, but most considerably smaller. These spiders seem content to stay in their webs and do not venture into the room itself, which is furnished with two sturdy oak tables, one longer than the other. The auto looks very much like a knives table. Um, and it's surrounded, they're both surrounded by chairs. Um, in the very back, there is a wooden stage that supports a large leather chair covered in cobwebs and lots of scampering spiders. Uh, a narrow door stands to the port side right here. Oops. Help if I add a thing right here. Um, and it's hanging a jar reveals a flight of stairs that lead below. Up above you, there is an iron bird cage that hangs from a chandelier. And inside it is a house drake that looks fairly familiar. Oh boy. No. You saved Majenko. the bad guy's house strike. Majenko is sitting in the birdcage. He looks mm, not good. His skin has small little cuts everywhere. His wing uh, looks like it was recently broken. Uh, it's healing, but it definitely, Miri, especially to your eye, looks like uh, this little guy has been through some abuse and when you walk in he sees you and he immediately sits up as you enter uh you see of course the six thugs four of them the ones miri you saw go in two of them you didn't see they must have been in here before you got there um they a couple of them look bloodied um and uh at the on the throne sits Dervargo. Uh, and just for your reference again, so you guys can uh, remember what he looks like. He is wearing uh, what looks like studded leather. Uh, he's got two very nasty looking knives that come out of his gauntlets. And most importantly, he's covered in spiders. They crawl up and down his arms, his legs, across his head, and he doesn't seem phased or worried about them. In the least, he seems completely at home. Before when we you start, enter... Sorry, go mm -hmm. ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you first. Well, I was going to say, before we start negotiating with this guy, I really got to use the washroom. Seems like a good Sure, time. sure. That's a good idea. We'll just take a quick break, and then we'll uh, continue. Thanks. Run, Otto, run! Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we're going to have to kill him now. Wow. One okay from your goddess and you're just rearing to kill someone, huh? No, but like, wouldn't you want to kill somebody who'd kicked a cat? Quite crazy. A sentient cat? And then put it in a birdcage? I bet it's round too. It is. Look at it. You can see it right there. The fiend. Yeah, so, like, now he's got to die. I think we should probably take a consensus on who's cool to keep going to. Sure. That might Legend be a good 54. idea. Also, I mean, this is did, a nice little cliffhanger. Part, yeah, did you hear the um, part where we just decided that this dude now has to die? I did hear that. Okay, yeah. Just giving you a heads up. Yeah. Well, I understand my uh, band of murdering hobos. We have a home, thank you. Fuck you, I have a house. <laughs> Y'all just live there. Wow. <laughs> Words Miri would never say. <laughs> no, but I've known these fucking creeps for like a week. So yeah, y'all just live there. Amelia didn't want to live there. Yeah, but it really didn't take any convincing to get you in the door, did it? Her mother wow. handed her like 10 eviction notices. Yeah, and you cried over all of them and now you live there. So like, yeah, no convincing. None. Does Murray say this to the orphans too? <laughs> no, she likes them. I didn't want to live here. These yeah, grown well, it didn't take people. much convincing. I'm back, you could have lived that. out on the gutter. <laughs> 
All right. All right. Everyone back? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, looks like Sib's not back. People are living Sorry, on the gutter. I keep forgetting oh, oh, I have to push us to talk. But I All wanted right. to point out that um, Arlen actually didn't sleep at the uh, orphanage last night. She spent the whole time in the lab. I mean, she got a full eight hours, but she spent it all in the lab. Awesome. So everybody else slept in, like, beds, and you slept in a crawl space. Otto's been sleeping outside. <laughs> awesome. So, like, everybody else slept in beds, and somebody slept on the ground, and somebody slept in a crawl space. So, uh, Flax slept saying, on Toby. Yeah, what you're saying is <laughs> I'm Otto is the only hobo. Uh, to sleep on Toby's probably more comfortable than most beds. He's furry. Yeah. Warm. I'd say you're more responsible for the, for flack than you are for these guys. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. probably true. <laughs> All right. Um, first things first. Uh, it was requested we take a consensus to see who's good to keep going or if we should end on this nice little cliffhanger right here. I'm indifferent. I can keep going, but if people got to go to bed, they got to go to bed. Whatever. It's cool, man. Um, All right. I guess. You know, the, the 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 GM might know best. I mean, is this the kind of thing where I mean, how long do we have? How long is this going to take? It's, right. I will say this: it could go fairly quickly. It could take a while. Uh, it depends on how violent things get. So it might be best to stop, given that Mary just announced. <laughs> now things could definitely change. I'm sure, but Mary did just announce that this guy has to die. So what, if like this in does break game or it, it no, 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 no. Sorry. Blue announced. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, okay. no, no. Where is a lot nicer than I am, actually. Yeah, I'm totally um, fine with this guy dying. Fucking a. So now yeah, you're so, speaking so my language. So maybe we should go ahead and stop for now, because if it does devolve into combat, it, it might. It's going it to be a while. Be, it might be a fight. I'll just tell you that might be a fight. What you're saying is it's a good thing I healed up before coming in here. No, what I'm saying is that most of the time when I think that things are going to be a fight, you guys end up kicking ass. So I can't say with any confidence anymore. Yeah, because as <laughs> but, soon as you announce that it's going to be really hard, it 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 doesn't happen. Well, that's I'll tell you. Saying, that's why I'm just saying the neutral route. It might be a fight. Uh, a 7v1 <laughs> is not something that we've experienced. The last time there was supposed to be a reasonable fight, we managed to get everyone out of the house mm-hmm. and fought just a dude. 7v1. There's four of us. Sorry, 7v4, excuse me. <laughs> He's like, I mean, 7v1 competent one. Now, who that is, I guess. <laughs> no, no, I just mean, I, I meant well, like, seven guys like versus us. 4v9 if we don't bar the door. And now you lost me. Yep. Oh, right, the two yards behind. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is a lot of dudes. you know, are we counting the spiders? Let's hope these dudes suck. Exactly. We don't know what else will come. This is this is going to be probably, from what I can tell, in my limited experience, this this looks like it'll be the most difficult fight. Because numbers mean way more than a little bit of stats. Like yeah, four, four dudes know, versus one high level dude. And doesn't rely on stats. Setting this whole fucking boat on fire. How about that? The fires know. takes a while to spread, fires though. Goes. I mean. Yeah, but you know what's great? Tinder, cobwebs, and uh, dry. I will timber that's been sitting here's the thing in alcohol you, you go walk into any bar and see if you can set it on fire before they stop you and kill you <laughs> i'll also say this especially miri would would know this and most of you would know this arlen would know this amelia probably would know this Otto might not care but would know this um as even christina told you like if you end up killing this guy no one's gonna shed a tear arson arson that could endanger the lives of innocent people is highly illegal also as a as a you know general thing with these ships they the wood tends to be like rather flame retardant right because it's yeah but how long has that been sitting here yeah i'll say that this ship does look like you could probably set it on fire if you wanted to in fact kind of the opposite in the sense that the ship is old enough that if you set a fire here it might spread pretty quickly unless there's magical resistances that you're unaware of well i have sense magic so yes you do i wanted to yes, ask you a question. i would i gorum does not approve of killing your opponents by just letting the whole fucking place on fire this is... i don't <laughs> care 
<laughs> said no invading orc army ever. Yeah. <laughs> that's not bad. I'm pretty sure burn it all to the ground is kind of a... Yeah, what's up? Uh, Cat's Grace. That enhances uh, my dexterity. Agility. Correct. Plus four to my dexterity. Which means if I shoot my crossbow, I'd get an extra four points. No, two. you get Notice? an extra two. Plus two to your... Bo- so think that every okay. every two points is one to your bonus. Yep. Okay, that's what I wanted to add. Well, technically... Theoretically, yeah, it'll always be two because Unless even it's if you say it like, well, no, I, even no, even five, if it's odd, it'll still be plus two. No, five could be three. If you're at That's, like, if you're at like thirteen and you get a plus five, it's three. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it could be plus three. It depends on what your what's your uh, dexterity well, score. Well, cat's right grace now. is four, isn't it? Right, it is. It so is. So it's always right. two. It's always two. It's not odd. It's always two. I'm just saying. So you would add you would add plus two to your hit. To to the to hit, okay. So that's really good. I mean, plus two is really good. Yeah, yeah it's a lot. Yeah, um, and that also that's not just to hit. That's also reflex saving throws, um, armor. Your 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 armor. Your AC. Ass- assuming bonus. assuming your the whatever armor you're wearing allows that high of a dexterity bonus, it probably doesn't. You're wearing what chain or something? Studded leather. What are you wearing for armor? Arlen. Studded leather, max stacks is five, so I could it would add two, so that's fine. Yeah, so what's that's, your that's uh, what's your like dexterity really bonus? Good. Plus three right now? Yeah, currently plus three. So they yeah, so yeah, it would allow it. Yeah. Two at two mm-hmm. AC and plus two to hit, that's wicked. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so we'll go ahead and stop there for the night. Um and we will we will next session be streaming yeah I'm oh my have, gosh yeah you, this this might actually you might start streaming on a what could be a pretty uh pretty interesting session the most violent game of knivesies ever Whoa, try to some, somebody try and remind me to set this up before next session i guess i got two weeks sure i'll, I'll get I, with you i haven't actually put that uh, key in that tom gave me gotcha uh, i'll I'll, uh, I'll shoot you a message like on wednesday or something yeah, it would be appreciated. Next next Wednesday. Yeah. So so for everyone, so that would be uh Friday the twenty second will be our next game. Okay. Woohoo. Beauty. Woot woot. All right, everyone. Well thank you. That was actually a lot of fun. Um <laughs> I was curious if you guys would go into any of the other ships or if you just try and barge your way in or what happened, but that turned uh Turned really well. I'm glad someone played Knivesies. That's a really fun thing to do <laughs> for a GM. Um, I, I'll I'll just be right up front. I'm always going to look for the, the combat. <laughs> hey, I understand. So bad at the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, diplomacies? Now you're fine. Yeah, rolls, like zero, right, left, and center. Look at me with my zeros. So, so what all do you want us to tell? Do you want to? You cut out. Do you want us to what? What do you have Skype open? Sib? Yes. Sorry, you cut off. Uh, I said, do you want to tell us what we missed in some of the other rooms? It's up to you. Yeah, I'm curious. Was Was the dragons thing a drug den? I'm going to say no, I won't tell you because um, there's always opportunity and there may be even motivation to come back here in the future, depending on how everything plays out. All right. Well, just thought I'd ask. What a bunch yeah, of typically, bullshit. God damn typically, it. Typically, the way I'm going to look at it is when it comes to places like this, you will always be welcome to come back if you choose to and explore it yourselves. Oh man, does that mean I have to actually do something to get Madam what's her name to like me again? I mean, only if you go to C5. C5. Yeah. <laughs> House of Clouds. Yeah. I get it C C because it's in All, the water. <laughs> a, a House of Clowns. I just love that that uh, brothel where everyone's dressed like clowns. <laughs> Oh, be that terrifying. would be a very niche clientele. Yeah, I seriously. Hey man, there's a lot of juggalos out there who need some love. And <laughs> Would would it be considered like would other I don't know like on the next session when we start or whatever if I did like my combat music box would that like 
be weird. I don't know. <laughs> no, a blast is awesome. Are you kidding me? Weird? Yes. Plus, are you asking would it be seen as a hostile act? Plus one yes. to hit. Yes. I, I I can't imagine it would. If I check, understand that you're talking about what, what, what grants box. um it grants what is what is that what does that one do? It's a weird science device uh, that does plus what? one moral bio- bonus to attack rolls and saving throws against fear effects. And it's against it's for everyone the group. Mm-hmm. Uh, allies. All right. So here's the way I look at it. It'd be very weird. Because all of a sudden you'd have a box that's playing music and the world would react to that realistically. As in, they're not going to think you're trying to attack them with music, but they are going to wonder why you're playing like a theme song. <laughs> okay. You could I tell mean, them, like... this is Jim Sheridan's theme song. <laughs> yeah, Jim Sheridan. This is the music we enter every room to. That's right. Yes. I'm Jim Sheridan right. and this is my song. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's like you know a bard would announce somebody kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, no, it seems legit to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, that's the way I'll treat the weird science devices because one of the interesting things I think about the artificer is that they're not well known. So I'm sure most people would know what it looks like to cast a spell, but why would they think anything odd? I mean, well, okay, yes, they would certainly think something odd, but why would they think anything threatening about you playing a music box? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just picturing like, like this conference room, and you're entering into like a business negotiation, and like you enter the room, and the first thing you do is like put down your music box and be like, "Let's talk business." <laughs> please, please tell me, please tell me, please tell me that music box plays the theme from Rocky. We just said it was something in uh, that, that where he had, but it can be whatever we want. It could be like the Babylon Five, even though we can't. <laughs> Does it even has like uh, Sheridan in there? It was the year we lost everything. <laughs> oh Five seconds, so you know. <laughs> 